All right, today we're gonna do a little bit of a video concerning the 66 Caprice. What we've got is, uh, I know I told you in the previous video that we're gonna be converting this over to automatic transmission. He bought a parts car that was automatic, so he has all the parts to convert it over. And we're gonna rebuild this power glide. The power glide is, uh, we don't know the condition of it. We know the car had been parked for a long time, since maybe the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, that's the same way mine was, uh, my, my power glide. And it ended up, there was nothing wrong with the transmission, but we be replacing all the parts. We bought the master rebuild kit and we've got the book and everything that tells how to do it. I've done it once before on my Impala and it came out good, it worked good. But that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna go through re rebuilding the power glide. It was fairly simple. I had never rebuilt a transmission before, the one I did, and it was exactly the same transmission. It's in my '65. This is not really a very complete how-to, but it's just a basic overview. But anybody who's considering doing this. This is the book you want to get. It tells all the details of rebuilding it, inspecting, everything you need to know for working on a power glide. All right. First thing we're going to do is take the servo out. Just take those three bolts out. And there's a little bit of spring tension behind there uh, when we take it off, but it's not a lot. It's not going to shoot off. Tap it a little bit with a rubber hammer. Or still hammer carefully. Can you move with your hands? Sit up right. You don't want to bend the case. You don't want to use that. You got to be real careful. You put marks in that aluminum. This fluid going everywhere. I guess it all was empty. So you want to make sure you get it drained out real well beforehand. This one's still got some in it. I guess any of them's going to have some in it. Transmission fluid's very brown. Now, if you have something, you can pull this out. So it may be hard to pull out because it's been in there a while. Hold on, don't do that. Yeah. All right, he, he uh, just wiggled this thing around a little bit. It felt like it was stuck at first. But then it just came right out. And there's that piece along with the spring there. There's a it's lot of gunk in Two there. springs and the shaft. It all come out. This thing's looking like some nasty stuff in it. We'll have to clean it all up. Yeah, you can see a little bit of sludge up in there. And we're going to clean all these parts completely when we're, once we get them out. The next thing we're going to do is take the seal off the end of the tail shaft. 
while it's held solid on the transmission, it's easier to get out. And to do that, we're just going to use a screwdriver and a hammer. So we ended up getting it out. He ended up using the lady slipper bar, pushing it in there and prying away from it. That one was a little bit harder to get out than most of them that I'm used to seeing. All right, we're gonna pull the speedometer uh, gear out. He already took the bolt out with the little holder and it goes right there, the bolt does, and then it just pulls right out. Jumped right into the cleaning bath. That's what it looks like. So when this thing gets reinstalled, you have to install it to where the notch is lined up with the hold down clamp. And it'll be very obvious because you won't be able to do it without without it being that way. Next, next we're going to pull out this modulator valve and we're going to buy a new one. If you have a, a wrench that fits it, that's good. It takes kind of a thin wrench. But what I've always had pretty good luck with is just grabbing it with a pair of channel locks. Most of the time it screws right out fairly easily. And honestly you can do it pretty easily without damaging it too. Once you get it broke loose, it, it comes out real easy. There should be a pin behind here and a spring. There's the pin that goes in it. That's something we've got to make sure we don't lose. And back in here, we need a magnet and we can pull this out. Alright, so we removed the modulator and now, now you pull the Pull this valve and spring out of here. And like everything else, we'll clean everything, keep everything together so we know how to put it back. Now we're gonna take the bolts off the tail housing shaft. Or the, not the tail housing shaft, off the tail housing. We did take the speedometer gear out, Audi. All it did is pull out after you took that bolt off. It just pulled right out? Yeah. Yeah, it was nothing. I it's figured it it's sitting over there on the table. We loosened these up already. So they were real tight. Huh? These, these right here were real tight. You want to water out the top of that? No, not right now. No. Yeah, give me another one. I'm about to run that. So we got all the bolts out of the tail housing. Now it just slides right off. Sometimes you might have to tap it. In our case, we didn't have to tap it. And as you can see, there's nothing in here, just the sludge of it sitting for so many years. All right, we're gonna pull this out now. This is what connects to the band inside. Take a wrench and loosen up the nut. Then take an Allen wrench. This thing screws all the way out. Screw that out. All right, so we're screwing this out. You can see it's real long. Pull it out. It comes all the way out. We're gonna clean it. Next, we're gonna remove the clip that's on the governor here with the O-ring pick. It's just a little C-clip. That pick it with the And it comes out. Comes out the bottom. I'll snap that back on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This is a very small part, so you have to be real careful not to lose stuff. Alright, so we've got the clip back on there. The next thing we're going to do is remove this screw right here. So we took the gear off. We ended up uh, knocking it off with a brass punch. And we, we are gonna take this rear governor support off right now. Anyway, we're gonna take the four bolts out and then we're gonna tap this slightly and it should come out. We're gonna take that last bolt out. Right here. It just took a slight little tap to get it loose. Be careful. And this is a uh, this is one of the older models, so it has a rear pump also, and that's the gears of the pump right there. So we gotta be very careful with all that. I don't think I take a picture of the back. So so we took the rear oil pump off. There's a little tiny pin right here that sticks in the shaft. Be very easy to lose if you weren't real careful. Then we're gonna take this little metal shim out, whatever this is, plate. So now we got that out. You can see all the sludge that's inside this transmission. That hole's completely full. Now we're taking the pan off. It's pretty straightforward. This thing to do is drain it before you do it. Got it. All of them don't have a pl uh, plug, but this one does. We just took the pan off, and this thing has got some nasty looking stuff in the bottom of it. But one thing I'll say about this car, we found stuff in it. It had eight track tapes in it. It had uh, salt packages that were bicentennial. They had bicentennial logo, and the sticker on the windshield was 76. So we think the car sat since 76. So I'm guessing the transmission fluid just solidified or whatever it did in the bottom of the pan. So all this stuff will clean up, though. All right, next step is we're taking the filter off. This is the two screws. See how nasty that is on the bottom. But wouldn't expect any different. Everything else has been nasty in there. Next, we're gonna remove the detent guide plate by removing these two bolts here. Oh, good. Oh, I thought it was a washer, but it wasn't. Alright, next we're taking the valve body off. 
and we've already took the bolts loose. We took out these three bolts on the side here and these four bolts on this side. We also took loose this bolt right here that held the spring for the manual valve. Pulled it, we pulled the spring out of that hole and pulled the bolt out. Now the valve body is already loose, so he's gonna grab it. And you're probably gonna get some more fluid according to the book. We gotta pull that tube out at the same time. Once the tube. Yeah. So that pretty much let everything out at the same time. And this transmission is <laughs> really like coated and waxed. Sludgy. This is like the sludgiest one I've ever seen. All right, so next step thing out there so far. in the book is loosen these two bolts that are, they call them pinch bolts. They're on pinch, they're on brackets that pinch together on the shaft. We're going to loosen those up with an owl wrench. So using the Allen wrench, we're taking those two loose. You kind of got to move them around to be able to get to them. You can grab it on the outside there. Oh, it ain't gonna turn that far. Oh, there it is. I call this the rooster comb. This is the part that you feel when you change your gears. You click, click, click. All right, that's so all we're doing here is loosening them up. And then we're going to spread them apart with a screwdriver right here in the crack. So he pulled the gear shift shaft out the side after he loosened those two bolts up. Now we're taking these two loose to get the other part out. Are you just bought a new one instead of rebuilding it? Nice. So now we got that all loose. We also got a spring down in here. It just comes right out. So we took all the bolts out of the front pump. And we're going to, there's two threaded holes in here that you can use. If you had two slide hammers, you can use that, but there's you can also pry against these bolts carefully. So he's pulling on this thing with try to find spots that it don't matter. You can see that it's moving. There we go. It's that easy to pop loose. And then you just pull it off. So we're pulling the input shaft and the drum out all in one time. And there's a washer down in there that we gotta be careful with. So once we pulled the input shaft out, the band is just sitting in there where we already took the bolt loose earlier. So we pull the band out. So the next step is, it says the planetary can be removed through the front of the case. Right now it's kind of tight so we're gonna figure out what it takes to get it out be very careful oh, maybe it's gonna be way up off the shaft yeah it's probably gonna burn it is yeah, pick it up on me i need something to set on the back of it that's all right i had it off There we go, we remove the planetary along with the tail shaft all in one piece. All right, so you gotta lift the paw up with your finger and pull this other gear out too. And 
Take the, we're gonna we're gonna clean everything up now. All right, so you got the big snap ring here. You just gotta pry on one side of it until you get it out. But once you get it a certain amount, you can just grab it and pull it. You kind of gotta work it around. Once it comes out, it, it makes it to where you can pull out all the reverse clutches. And they come out just like that. All right, next we're gonna do, pull out the reverse piston. And this is one that's got a lot of springs underneath it. And this is where the special tool comes in. We had to drill a hole in our makeshift table. And this piece of all three is gonna have a, this washer is gonna be under the bottom. We're gonna stick it up through the hole and then we're gonna tighten down on the top nut. And it will compress the springs enough to get the snap ring off. All right, so we tightened up the bolt far enough down to get the O-ring, I mean the snap ring out of it. He pulled the snap ring out with a couple small screwdrivers and O-ring pick. So now I'm just gonna loosen the bolt back up on the bottom. And there's springs underneath there, but it, it loosened up slowly so it'll, so it won't, they won't come out. All right, so now we took the tool out this thing just lifts up out of there. You can see all the springs that are underneath there. We've got to take all them out and clean them, and we're going to clean the casing now. But that snap ring, you got to press it down and put the snap ring on there to hold it. All right, so after we take that out, the book tells us on this old style with the rear pump that we have to blow air in this hole that's at the 11 o'clock position to remove the piston. That's the reverse piston. All right, go ahead and blow air in. All right, so do it again. Push it back in and try it again. May just be gummed up. Do it again. That's fine. Did you get it out? No, but it'll come out. Your air is not going to do no more good. Yeah, it's like went so far and stopped. Blew it out to the O ring. There's O rings in that. That's why you got to take it out. That's what I was saying. There's a big O-ring around it. Where'd they go? I threw them away. Oh. All right, I remo we removed the reverse piston, and the reason we got to take it out, there's an O-ring around it. Now everything's out of the case, so we can clean the case. All right, so we're at the point of uh, taking the pump apart. There's a bulldog. Yeah, I left it in there because um, uh, I was waiting. We're, we're taking it apart, and... Doing all the checks that it tells us to check. Does it need to be sitting flat or anything? No, it shouldn't be no. And you can see the gears in the pump right here. And they say if you were to take these gears out, you need to mark them so that they go back in in the same place if you're reusing them. But this thing, we got to clean this up a little bit too. It's still got this crud in here that's everywhere else in the transmission. So we removed these two rings from the two holes there and new ones come to replace them with. And the next thing we're gonna do is you want this yeah, drive out this pin right here to remove this priming. This priming valve for the uh, front pump. It's got a uh, roll pin in here. You can kind of see some of the internals there. All right, so we just drove it out with this small punch. And while you're doing that, you gotta be careful not to lose the spring out of there. I was holding my hand there to keep it from getting lost. And then you gotta push out the stuff from the other side. And it's a good idea when you're rebuilding, definitely to clean this stuff up. I know on the engines, those things will hang up sometimes. It'll cause it to blow pressure out. So we removed this snap ring out of the, it's holding down the lower, the low sun gear on the drum. And now we're gonna remove the high clutch pack. Then they'll have to go one certain way back in there now. All right, there's the high clutch back. All 
and the dry washes. That's the dry washer. Don't lose that. So we remove those two things. So we're going to use the same tool again to press this down. This front, there's springs underneath there in order to get to some uh, seals that need to be replaced. Works a lot better on this one because it's nice and level. So then you just got to find the end of the snap ring. So then we got that out. All we got to do is loosen this up with the wrench. Under the bottom. Don't want to make it come off and shoot. That thing will fly too. Still got. Yeah. Oops. All right, we're good. So when you take this off, there's a lot of little springs under here. don't want to lose and there's an o-ring that's right there that's what we're the reason we took it off we'll clean everything now we're going to start working on the valve body we've got to take it apart and do some stuff to it first thing we got to do is slide out the manual valve roll it on a flat surface as you would an engine push rod to check for straightness so Basically, it's straight. This is not a really great flat surface, but I, I'll, we, we'll check it on something. Now we're removing the bolts that hold the two halves of the valve body together. Now we're going to take out these six bolts here from the top, from the top half of the valve body. All right, so we cleaned up all the parts on the valve body and we're gonna start putting it back together. We've got parts everywhere. We've got all the valve body parts here. 
definitely say there's hundreds of parts that we've taken out of this probably. We'll try to have them laid out organized as possible. A whole lot of cleaning. So we're at the point of putting the valve body back together. This is a check valves and it's only in the early models like this one. From what I understand, they said everything else is exactly the same. And we've got those sitting in place. We matched our gaskets up with the plate that goes between the two valve bodies, the stainless steel plate. We matched the gaskets, we held it up. It came with another set of gaskets that I'm guessing is for an older style. But you can see when you hold it up, all the holes are unblocked, which is what we want. The other set blocks two of the holes. So it, this, the kits always come with parts for like all the different power glides. All right, we're gonna insert the high speed time, high speed downshift timing valve. I've already put the oil in, I mean, the assembly lube on there. Now we've got to put the spring in and put the pin back in. All right, we're going to start putting the valve body back together. We've already greased these pistons and put them in. And now we're going to put the gasket on here. We're laying the upper part down, putting the gasket on. The gasket lined up perfectly with the plate that goes in the middle. And then, then you put the plate on there. Cool. So we lined the gaskets up. We held them in place with some assembly glue. And we put all the middle bolts back in and we're going to torque them down to 15 foot pounds. Then we'll move on to the next part. It ain't quick yet. Should I do it to it quick? Or yeah. A little bit at a time everywhere. Just do it a little. So we're talking 15 foot pounds. Yeah. We're kind of going from the center outward. It doesn't give us a torque spec, but and then torque pattern. That's how we're going to do it. All right, so we just put a new seal in here. It's fairly straightforward. This is the seal that was leaking on my transmission before I rebuilt it. Very difficult seal to change if you're not rebuilding the transmission. So now we're gonna put in some of the shift mechanisms. So we put the snap ring in, now we're loosening it back up. So now we're gonna put the new steels and clutches in there. The first one we start with is the wavy washer. It goes on the bottom. It goes just straight down in there. We wipe this off. Supposed to be wavy? Yep. It's the wavy washer. 
<laughs> yes, it is. So you put the wavy washer, and then you put a steel, and these things have a notch in them that they'll only go one way. We just have to figure that out where the notch is. All right, so then we're going to put a clutch. Is it off too? No. A little new steel. No clutch. Hold on. Clutch. Steel. Clutch. Well, we know we got the same amount. Well, I think we're using all on this one. Oh, you got one extra of those? No, this goes on that, I think. <laughs> All right, we put in the reverse uh, spring pack. And we tighten it down with our tool. So now we're ready to put in the clutches. All right, we're going to put in the clutches for the reverse. Wavy washer goes in first. I already put it in. You can literally see it's a wavy washer. Then we're going to put in a steel. And these only go in one way. There's a notch. I gotta find the notch. Oh, it's gonna be down there. I saw it on here. I don't see no knots. I see a knots there. You see this notch? It only goes in one way though. Let me just spit it till we find it. Yeah, I guess maybe that's what the knots is for. What the purpose of that, I don't know. I feel like I've already went all the way around. Definitely not it. I can make the same distance from slot to slot. Here. Spin this thing around to open it. Blow it open and start to the thing. Why the hell? What's up? That way you ain't reaching over top. Let me try it. Hold on. That's it? Mm -hmm. We got to be the problem, man. Hold on. It's our over, man. See the snap in there, I think. Shouldn't it? Yeah. So we're putting the servo back in. 
It came with a new ring and a new O-ring. It's got a ring on it like a piston on the engine. It doesn't have any give at all. That's the old one. Broke. Well, we decided to just try to get the thing put together. It's almost, it's after one o'clock in the morning. And it's not really a how-to video. It's just showing you what we're doing, I guess. We got the front pump in. We got the valve body in. We got all this junk back together. Almost got everything back together. 